Greetings, everybody. So we are continuing our videos on cause based image encryption. And the topic of today's video is NPCR and UAC tests. So let's begin reminding everybody that we are talking about symmetric encryption here, uh, as you saw in the previous, previous videos. So transmitter and receiver both use the same chaotic system uh, with the same configurations, right? Okay, like you know, initial conditions and parameters. So the classic operations. Again, I'm reminding you our permutation and substitution, which means that we are shuffling the pixels of the image to disperse the information throughout the plain text. And then we are substituting uh, each pixel with a different value to completely uh, hide the information. Okay, so uh, let's think about this uh, communication and symmetric encryption design. Okay, uh, there is a set of attacks called differential attacks, or uh, you may have heard them as known plain text attacks. What's the idea behind that? Okay, so let's say we have the encryption that works exactly as we described above. Okay, and uh, a classic approach by a potential attacker is this: they consider a very uh, potentially very simple image, let's say an all-black image, and they encrypt it and they obtain the output ciphertext. Okay, let's assume that they don't know exactly the keys of the design. Okay. And let me remind again everybody, the keys are the parameters and initial conditions for chaotic encryption, okay? So let's say in this example, we were using the logistic map. This means that the keys are the initial condition and the parameter are, okay? So, you know, let's say an attacker doesn't know the keys. So it uses the encryption pretty much like a black box. They can only use an input. They can use an input to the system and obtain an output ciphertext, okay? So what they do is this. They take this very simple image, they encrypt it and obtain the result, okay. And then uh, they take the exact same image, but apply a very minus change, okay. Let's say that they only change a single pixel each time, okay. So let's say I have an old black image, one white pixel, and then I move it around each time to a different position. They encrypt it again, and they obtain a different ciphertext, okay. And then they use uh, the same image, they also change the white pixel, put it somewhere else, encrypt it again, and obtain a different ciphertext. So uh, they obtain a bunch of ciphertexts that all originate from the same image that only has some minuscule changes, right? And then they try and compare these ciphertexts and see what difference do they have uh, or, you know, with each other. Uh, because they all result with the same, from the same image with only minor changes uh, in it. So what's the idea here? Uh, if we have some fixed keys, as you see right here, uh, let's say I have uh, a fixed communication key with R equals four and the fixed initial condition uh, throughout the whole communication procedure, if you like, let's say a whole day or something. And I have the keys fixed. I know the keys, the receiver does know the keys, but the attacker doesn't know the keys, but they are fixed, right? Uh, for all the amount of information that I'm about uh, to transmit, you know, in this case, uh, they can reveal some vulnerabilities or some similarities or some patterns in the encryption design by doing this procedure again and again, you know, when creating the same image with minor changes and obtaining uh, the ciphertexts and comparing them. Okay, so if we have fixed keys, they may be able to uncover some patterns in the encryption process. Okay, because they can obtain, for example, this white uh, pixel, why, where did it go? or uh, how much are these different uh, images to each other, uh, depending, of course, on the design and how complex the design is, uh, you may not get enough change in between encryptions. So, you know, all of these images having almost the same uh, format, you know, only being different in a couple or just one pixel, we may result in ciphertexts that are very, very similar to each other. And, for example, if you only do exclusive or operation with a fixed key, you know, all of these ciphertexts will be the same except for one pixel. So they will be uh, very easy for an outsider to understand how the encryption works. They may not know the keys, but by observing the fact that, uh, uh, you know, all of these uh, slightly different images resulting only slightly different ciphertexts, they can immediately understand, okay, that maybe there's no shuffling and maybe they are only doing an exclusive or operation because all of these ciphertexts uh, are different in exactly one pixel, like the original plain texts. Okay, 
So there is a potential issue here by having fixed keys. Okay, uh, an attacker may be able to uncover information about how the encryption works without necessarily knowing either the keys or the exact parameters or details of the encryption. So there is a solution here uh, to resist this sort of differential attacks. And the idea behind this is to make the design plain text dependent. What does this mean? I have a blue box indicating this. This means that prior to encryption, I'm going to use the plain text information uh, in order to uh, define the keys of the chaotic map that I'm using. Okay. So let's say, for example, this is just an example. This is not uh, the ideal case. Let's say we fix the parameter equal to four, because if we change it, we might have an issue with the logistic map. But the initial condition is going to be inside, you know, from zero to one. But it will result from some sort of hash on the plain text. Okay. And by hash, I mean some of a function nonlinear that will give me a fixed uh, length um, for the input, uh, which is the initial condition. Okay. Of course, ideally, all the parameters should be plain text dependent. Okay, so just take this as a simple example. And what this very simple but essential change uh, makes in the design is that the effect here is this. Every time the attacker changes, even to the slightest, their plain text, so let's say they change only one pixel value, immediately the initial conditions or the key values in general will change. Okay, so immediately you will have the, the so-called avalanche effect, which we remember the chaotic systems have. You know, once you change one initial condition or one parameter, you have an avalanche effect in the time series, okay? So this will result in changing the complete encryption. So although all these plain texts uh, actually have, you know, a, a difference in only one pixel, the cipher text will be completely different from each other. So they will not be able to unmask any information about the original plain text and of course, how about how the encryption works okay so that's the idea behind making the encryption design plain text dependent okay so the hash here as i said it's not doesn't have to be just the x0 it can be uh, you know in a way that affects all of the parameters for any given map so this is just an example what can be this hash okay some of people use the very well known hash functions from the existing literature you can take even simpler cases. For example, let's say we are using the mean value of the pixels, uh, modulo one, for example, but this can be uh, potentially you know, erroneous because different images may end up having the same mean value. But this is just an example. Other designs may use the entropy of the image. So there are many different approaches that you can take here. But in general, let's say that you are using some sort of hash from the plain text. Okay. So this is an amazing way to resist this sort of uh, differential attacks. And for this, there is a very well-known paper. I strongly advise you to read it uh, regarding two very well-known specific uh, statistical measures. These are the number of pixels change rate, NPCR, and the unified average changing intensity, QASI. Okay, very well-known tests. Pretty much all the papers have it nowadays. So what do they measure? Actually, they measure how uh, two different encrypted images differ from each other. Uh, but not, of course, any possible encrypted images. We are talking about encrypted images that result from the almost identical uh, plain text. So let's say you take a plain text image, you encrypt it, and this is the epsilon right here. Then you take the exact same image, you change it only slightly. Let's say you change only one pixel, Okay, and change one pixel's value and encrypt it again. And uh, this is going to be the epsilon hat. So these two tests, uh, you know, measure how much different uh, these two uh, images, these two encrypted images are from each other. Okay, so remember, both of them result from the same plain text that is different only one pixel value. So ideally, though, uh, if the design is plain text dependent, these two encrypted images will be completely different from each other. Okay. So uh, the NPCR measure uh, practically measures sort of more of a binary uh, measure because uh, it tests, this D parameter here tests whether two pixels are different or not. And the UASI measure also uh, measures uh, in uh, how different they are. I mean, it also takes the difference between the pixel values, while this is more of a binary uh, test. 
<clears throat> and both of them in a very good plain text dependent encryption design should be close to the optimal values. Okay. I advise you to read the test to see what are the optimal values. I have an example here from uh, one of our own papers where we do manage uh, to get the optimal values for both tests. So you see, I have a collection of images here. First, we shuffle them and then we encrypt them. Okay. And of course, the encrypted images, <clears throat> I'm sorry, successfully managed to pass uh, both tests. Of course, by the way, you will notice that uh, for the all black and all white images, the shuffled image is exactly the same. We talked about it, of course, in a previous video. So for this case, uh, for the shuffled images, the NPCR and UAC tests actually fail. But after encryption, again, uh, they are close to the optimal values. Okay. So this is why we should always uh, try and make the encryption design plain text dependent. Okay. This is very important to resist the so-called uh, differential attacks. Okay, most of the papers you will read nowadays in the literature on chaos-based encryption actually do have that, uh, but not all of them, actually. You may find some papers uh, missing this very crucial uh, design in the encryption. So thank you very much. Uh, in MATLAB, uh, I will in the description of the video, I will put some MATLAB codes for you to compute uh, the NPCR and UAC tests yourself. So you will find them in the description of the video. So thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video.